products or applications arrive this process at rate of 10 per hour. They first go through an initial review process or initial manufacturing process. This can happen in service industry and in manufacturing industry. They go to the first resource pool and each flow unit, each product, each application needs 10 minutes here and there are two resource units, two operators, two machines. 40% go to sub-process A. Each flow unit requires 20 minutes over there and there are two resource units in this resource pool. 60% go to sub-process B. Each flow unit takes 30 minutes here and there are four resources in this resource pool. Compute the capacity of this process. How many products, how many customers, how many applicants, how many flow units per hour can come in and go out. Let's look into capacity of each resource pool. Throughput, 10 per hour. TP, or activity time, or unit load, 10 minutes. Station 1, initial review, 20, sub-process A, 30, sub-process B, 2, 2, and 4. We can easily compute capacity if it takes 10 minutes to do the first process, then per minute, we will have one over 10 products. And because we have two resources, that would be two over 10 per minute. If I multiply it by 60, that would be 12 per hour. 12 per hour, six and eight. But we shouldn't make a mistake and say capacity of the process is six per hour, because it was correct if 100% of applications, 100% of products were going through all processes. To compute the capacity of this process, we need a little bit more computations. 100% of applications go through the initial review process, but only 40% go to sub-process A and 60% go through sub-process B. Therefore, if 10 are coming in, 40% of them, which is four, goes to sub-process A, and six of them go to sub-process B. And now, since we have capacities, and we have throughputs, we can compute utilization, and we realize that resource one has the highest utilization, which is 83%. Therefore, if 10 consumes 83% of capacity of the first station, what throughput consume? The whole capacity, and that would be 10 divided by 0.83. 12 R equal to 12 per hour, is capacity of this process. Now let's go ahead and add one resource unit to this resource pool. Capacity of this station is changed to 18. Throughput is 12 and 40% of 12 is 4.8 and 60% of 12 is 7.2. Now, if we compute utilizations, utilization of station three is the highest utilization. And if you want to know the capacity under these restrictions with 12, we have utilization of 0.9. With how many? We have full utilization that is 12 divided by 0.9, and that makes it 
0.333. So if we increase this resource pool by one resource you need and go from 2 to 3, capacity will go from 12 to 13.33. Now let's go ahead and add one resource you need to this resource pool. Again, we go through the same process. Capacity here is increased from 8 to 10. The other capacities remain the same. Again, one goes here, 0.4 here and 0.6 here. And if this is the throughput, therefore 13.33 goes through this first one, 40% of it is here, 60% is here. Now, if we divide these throughputs by capacities, we get these utilizations, and under these utilizations, we want to increase this utilization to 1. The throughput can go to 15. Sometimes we need to do all these computations because we may be asked several intermediate questions. But is there a way to do the same in an easier way? The answer is yes. We are here. We have capacity and we have throughputs. Here we know out of each unit which comes in, 0.4 of it goes here. If one unit comes into this system, it will use the throughput of this will be 0.4. How many units should come in such that the throughput of this process is 6? X is equal to 6 divided by 0.4 and that is 60 divided by 4 and that would be 15. If one unit comes into the total system, 0.6 of it goes through the last process. Capacity of the last process is handling 8 flow units per hour. How many units should come in? to fully utilize that capacity. That x is equal to 8 divided by 0.6, or that is 80 divided by 6, or 40 divided by 3, or 13.3. Therefore, capacity at the beginning is 12 per hour. If you want to relax it, and add resource unit to this, the next bottleneck would be 13.33, which is this one, and the next one would be 15. The purpose of this example was when not 100% of the throughput goes through all sub-processes, then we cannot rely on these numbers and consider them as capacity. We need to apply percentages, see what percentage of throughput goes through what process, and then compute the capacity in that way. We explained two different ways to compute capacity when all the throughput does not go through all the sub-processes. Thank you for your attention.